Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 9th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In Diaries today, we got a nice walkthrough by Xavier showing how he deobfuscated a Windows script that he recently came across. This script essentially carries the second stage along with it as a large array that's uh, then being decoded via character substitution and, well, good old base 64 encoding in part. But well, imagine that uh, perimeter device securities are still uh, coming out. And today it's Palo Alto Network's uh, turn with an update for Pan OS. Now, this is sort of a little bit an interesting issue here. Palo Alto rates this as a CVSS score of 8.1, but again, it is an unauthenticated network-based attack that can execute arbitrary operating system commands with root privileges, which I think really sort of puts it more in the 9 to 10 range as far as vulnerabilities go. They state that the attacker would require some level of specific information about the configuration of an impacted firewall. My guess, and I'm totally guessing here, is maybe IP addresses and that hacker would be able to brute force these parameters. Now, to be vulnerable, you need to have the global protect portal feature enabled. Another little twist to this vulnerability, while this is a new distinct vulnerability, CVE 2020-2034, the advisory states that if you applied the patch for CVE 2020-2021, then you're also protected for this issue. I'm not aware of any additional details or exploits for this vulnerability, so you may have a week or two to patch this. And then we got more details regarding some of the vulnerabilities that Citrix patched earlier this week, including proof of concept exploit code. Again, those vulnerabilities weren't sort of screaming bad like what we had, uh, for example, from Citrix around New Year, but still quite interesting and uh, has some potential for some particular more targeted exploitation. One interesting little feature here is how code execution can happen here by an administrator or a user of the device actually clicking on a URL. Now, uh, this involves JNLP, the Java Network Launching Protocol. If you're not familiar with this, uh, but uh, you may have seen it, if you go to a website and it actually then offers you to download a little uh, Java application that will then connect back to, for example, an API or such, you often see them in these uh, clientless VPNs. That's, I believe, where Citrix is using them. But you also often see them, for example, in these uh, remote admin consoles for servers. So in order to download the JNLP file that you need to connect uh, to Citrix, you click on a link and then the problem is that parameters that are included in the link will be included in that JNLP file. And the result is that uh, you can inject additional code into the file and that's how you achieve code execution. A pretty interesting vulnerability. Uh, the other Citrix issues uh, he covers here in uh, this uh, blog post also may be a little bit sad in how simple some of these issues are. There's like a minor issue where you can download certain reports without authentication by essentially just saying that uh, you use the default signature and then API functions that allow you to read and write files and also delete directories. With all these additional hints out now, I would certainly expect uh, some limited exploitation of these vulnerabilities. Uh, nothing to be overly panicked about, uh, but well, uh, hopefully you kept your playbook, uh, how you patched quickly your Citrix devices over New Year, uh, some form of that uh, so you can patch uh, what you got within the next uh, week or two. 
And late last year, Mozilla did release its Send service. Send is uh, fairly neat and simple. You can upload a file. It will be encrypted in your browser before you upload it. And then the recipient can use a special link to download the file. And then, of course, it's also in decrypted again on the recipient's end. So... Uh, Pretty simple end-to-end -end encrypted file transfer feature. Sadly, as many similar features, this feature has been heavily abused to distribute malware. And Mozilla sort of forgot to really build in some robust abuse reporting into this service. So they now took the somewhat unprecedented step to suspend the service pending some kind of abuse handling feature. Of course, these type of service are always tricky because uh, the service doesn't necessarily know the content of the file. That's a little bit the idea of these services, but I expect that they will at least add a feature if I report a piece of malware by sending them the link to the malware, which does include the key. Well, uh, they may then be able to verify that it's malicious and remove it. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.